What are SpaceX and Boeing developing in space travel technology? What is the James Webb Telescope? And when are we planning to launch it? And what are some of the theories that explain the fate of the universe? Chapter 3 of The Evolution of Astronomy is coming right up. Last time on Feed My Curiosity, we looked at Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, one of the most important theories discovered in the 20th century. We also looked at the accomplishments made by Russian rocket scientist Konstantin Teslovsky, who is a big reason why we are able to fly rockets into space. Finally, we looked at all the different kinds of accomplishments made by the Americans and Russians in the space race. Now it's time to look at our accomplishments in the present, as well as what the future of astronomy holds for us. Thanks for joining us today on Feed My Curiosity. Don't forget, you could stay up to date with us by hitting the like and subscribe button. We have more videos coming up that we want to share with you. With NASA retiring their space shuttle program, it is now up to other companies to take the lead in bringing people to space. This is where Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, or SpaceX, comes in. SpaceX was founded in 2002 by entrepreneur Elon Musk. The company's goal was to revolutionize space travel technology and eventually be able to colonize planets. SpaceX's first major accomplishment was back in 2008, when its Falcon 1 became the first privately developed liquid fuel rocket to launch and orbit Earth. A year later, Falcon 1 Flight 5 successfully delivered a commercial satellite into Earth's orbit. SpaceX has been exploring a way to deploy reusable rockets, and this was demonstrated with their Falcon 9. In 2010, Falcon 9 completed 100% of its objectives on their first flight, and in 2014, the Falcon 9 completed its first stage landing into the Atlantic Ocean, and a year later, it completed its first land landing after successfully delivering 11 communication satellites into orbit. Perhaps Falcon 9's biggest accomplishment to date is being relaunched in 2017 for a delivery mission and landing again back to Earth. Falcon 9 has shown great progress in SpaceX's research in reusable rockets. One day, we're going to need rockets capable of delivering larger payloads and being able to travel farther, like Mars. This is where Falcon Heavy comes in, and in early 2018, it has already completed its first flight. It's not just SpaceX developing space travel technology too. Boeing is also pretty ambitious on bringing people to Mars. Among its products in development is the CST-100 Starliner, designed to carry up to seven passengers or passengers and cargo and can be reused up to 10 times. The CST-100 Starliner also adds comfort to space travelers by providing wireless internet and tablet technology. It's not up to us to say who's leading the world in the development of space travel technology. The most important thing right now is that we have people with the ambition of taking us beyond the stars. So what does the future of space travel and exploration hold in store for us? One planet we're hoping to visit one day is Mars. We already have rovers like Curiosity and Opportunity roaming the red planet, and NASA hopes to send the first Earthlings there by the 2030s. Aspiring space travelers can already experience it with the Mars 2030 Virtual Reality Simulator. A couple other destinations we're hoping to visit are Titan and Europa. What makes these moons special is that they are believed to have oceans. Europa, the icy moon that orbits Jupiter, is still geologically active, and beneath its surface lies the possibility of a liquid ocean. Could there be microorganisms or fish swimming under there? Or maybe an underwater colony inhabited by intelligent life? Who knows? NASA really wants to explore this moon because who knows what we'll find there? And Titan, which is the largest moon that orbits Saturn, seems to be more like a planet. It's bigger than Mercury and Pluto, and it's the only moon in the solar system to have a significant atmosphere, which contains nitrogen, like the Earth's atmosphere, as well as methane, hydrogen, and maybe argon. Organic molecules are also present in the atmosphere. We can't see what exists on the surface, but it's believed that ethane methane has formed an ocean. Infrared images of Titan reveal some interesting surface features, with one bright spot as big as 2,500 miles wide. There's really only one way to find out what's really on that thing, right? Meanwhile, the International Space Station is approaching its 20th year in orbit since its launch in 1998, and people seem to be motivated to keep it going. The ISS is expected to be active until 2024, although a House member has introduced a legislation that would extend its operations to 2030. Even then, there seems to be a gray area about what will happen with the ISS after that point. 
but we're sure that with improving space travel technology, it will still have its use down the road. And what about space telescopes? We already have the Hubble, which is capable of capturing images of the universe up to 15 billion light years away, proven by the Hubble Deep Field. The James Webb Telescope, or the JWST, is capable of seeing much farther than that. The Infrared Telescope will be able to see baby galaxies and get us a better understanding of the universe's origin as it peaks closer to the Big Bang event. Remember, because it takes time for light to reach us, the farther we look into the universe, the farther we are looking back in time. Looking at the sun is basically looking at the sun as it was 8 minutes ago. But please protect your eyes and don't do that. The JWST is facing some issues right now, but we're hoping the telescope will be launched into space by late March 2021. We also have some ongoing NASA probe missions. Since 1977, Voyager 1 and 2 have explored Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, as well as their moons, and are now investigating interstellar space. As of August 2017, Voyager 1 is about 20.8 billion kilometers away from the Sun while Voyager 2 is about 17.2 billion kilometers away. There is also a chance that Voyager could be intercepted by extraterrestrials, which is why NASA has prepared them with the Golden Record. The Golden Record is a phonograph record that shows our alien friends how to first of all use the record, and if they can access the record, they'll be able to hear everything us Earthlings have to offer about our planet, including nature sounds, music, and spoken greetings in 55 different languages. And who could forget New Horizons? It's thanks to our little buddy that we have high-resolution photos of Pluto that we can now use in elementary school textbooks. And New Horizons isn't stopping there. It's now set out to explore the deep regions of the Cooper Belt, filled with icy objects that have said to be the remnants of the solar system back when it was forming. With all the innovations made to study the universe, there's also some unsolved mysteries we're still trying to figure out, like dark matter. Recall what we talked about in the first chapter, when black holes were recently ruled out as dark matter. What we know about dark matter is out there, there's a string that's pulling and tugging stars to make them move the way they are. We just don't know what this string is yet. There's also a question of are we alone in the universe, or do we have extraterrestrial neighbors? We don't know the answer to this, but it hasn't stopped us from trying to contact them. Back in 1974, we sent the Arecibo message to the globular star cluster M13, which is about 25,000 light years away. This is how long it would take for the message to be received, and if it does get received, it will take another 25,000 years or so to receive the reply. Even then, however, in 25,000 years, the destination may not even be there. The Arecibo message consists of a picture containing the Arecibo telescope, the solar system, DNA, a human, and biochemicals. Recently, in 2017, a message was sent to GJ273, also known as Luton Star, which is about 12 light years away. The red dwarf includes the planet GJ273b, which is capable of supporting life. This message includes science and math, as well as music. The star is pretty close to us, so it shouldn't take very long for our message to reach its destination, and then get a reply come to us. We're in for an exciting future. Another mystery that is unsolved is just how big the universe is. We don't really know for sure. There's this thing called the observable universe, and when we measure it with us right in the middle, its radius is roughly 13.8 billion light years away. And that's only the observable universe. We don't know what exists past that. And finally, since we have theories of how the universe started, we also have theories of the fate of the universe. We know that the universe is expanding due to the red shift. As demonstrated by the Doppler effect, light observed in the universe is moving away from us towards the red spectrum. So if the universe did begin with the Big Bang, what happens next? If things continue to move away, will this result in the Big Rip? If the universe stops expanding and everything begins to move back and collapse on itself, will this result in the Big Crunch? What if there's no more thermodynamic free energy and the universe goes into a Big Freeze? Okay, we didn't mean to depress you at the end of the video, but for the sake of optimism, we could say that another possibility is that everything will keep expanding like it is, and everything will keep working for eternity. With all these theories about the fate of the universe, there's really no knowing for sure. And if we are to understand how the universe works, how it came to be, and how it will finish, it all starts with the understanding of whatever the heck this dark matter is. Astronomy has really come a long way since our Paleolithic ancestors started looking up at the night sky. The more we are able to discover and accomplish, the more that science fiction becomes a reality. 
Who knows what comes next, but we're certainly in for an exciting future. If you know of any other goals that people hope to accomplish in astronomy, or if you have any other comments, go ahead and post them below. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Feed My Curiosity.